Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Troy Clayton, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Commander Gary Wright. We warmly welcome the family of Flight Sergeant Reginald William Rowley, whose story will be told shortly. We also welcome Wing Commander Bob Howe, retired from the Air Force Association. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. The live stream of this ceremony is made possible by the Returned and Services League of Australia and the RSL and Services Club Association. We welcome members who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family and visitors to the memorial. If you're able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Thank you. If you're able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit, in the heart of the land they loved. And here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 103,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reeds or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Flight Sergeant Reginald William Rowley. Reginald Rowley was born on the 17th of February 1914 in Wodonga on the Victorian side of the Victoria New South Wales border, the son of Joseph and Ursel Rowley. He grew up alongside his siblings, Claude, Dorothy, June, Di and Josephine, and attended Bethinger State School and then Albury Grammar School, where he was school captain. After leaving school, he was involved in dairy farming with his brother Claude on the family farm and on the edge of the Hume Weir near Bethinger. When the farm was unable to support the two of them, Reg left to join the Victorian Police Force and settled in South Melbourne. Reginald Rowley enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force on the 10th of October 1941 at the age of 27. After initial training, he began training as a pilot, first attending elementary flying training school in Narandra in New South Wales. On the 23rd of June 1942, Rowley left Australia bound for overseas service. As part of the Empire Air Training Scheme, he was one of almost 27,500 RAAF pilots, navigators, wireless operators, gunners and engineers who throughout the course of the war joined Royal Air Force squadrons or Australian squadrons based in Britain. Rowley first travelled to Canada where he attended service flight training school near Dunville, Ontario. Towards the end of 1942, Rowley embarked for England. In June 1943, he joined 27 Operational Training Unit based at RAF Litchfield, which trained night bomber crews using the Vickers Wellington twin-engined long-range medium bombers. In October, Rowley was transferred to 460 Squadron, Royal Australian Air Force. Part of Bomber Command, the squadron flew the most sorties of any Australian bomber squadron and dropped more bomb tonnage than any squadron in the whole of Bomber Command. In late 1943 and early 1944, the squadron flew sorties in the Battle of Berlin. In early January 1944, Rowley was the pilot of a Lancaster bomber among a group tasked with bombing Berlin. During the early per part of the journey, crews did not see many fighters, but as they approached, Berlin fighter flares began appearing. The enemy put up fighters from airfields distant from Berlin. These joined up in packs, which sped on towards the capital, gathering reinforcements on the way without, before, intercepting the stream of bombers. We had to shoot our way in the front door and then shoot our way out again, one pilot later reported. After leaving base, no further news was received of Rowley's aircraft or its crew. All crew members were initially listed as missing in air operations on the 2nd of January, 1944, and later presumed dead. Reginald Rowley was 29 years old. After the war, an investigation established that the aircraft had exploded and crashed about 30 kilometres south of Berlin. The aircraft burned on the ground for several hours and the wreckage was later removed. The remains of the crew were buried nearby and were later exhumed and reburied. Today, Rowley's remains lie in Berlin War Cemetery under the inscription duty nobly done, ever remembered. His name is listed on the roll of honour on my left among nearly 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed today by the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Flight Sergeant Reginald William Rowley, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We'll remember them.
lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub of Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director, staff and volunteers, thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support of the Memorial's development project. And we wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you. <laughs>